Hi guys, please visit audibletrial.com forward slash YFAC for your free 30 day trial and the free audiobook. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Young, Young Free and, and Coupled. Coupled. My name is Shamika. And my name is Issa. And today we are going to be talking about lessons learned from children. But first, before we get started, I would like to say, hello, I'm back. We are back after a long break. You know, obviously I was pregnant before. (laughs) I'm not pregnant anymore. I've had the baby and I feel refreshed and, you know, back and ready to do some talking. Yes. Um, It is good to have my daughter, you know, finally at number four. Everyone's really happy for us. I'm happy for us. Um, And I feel refreshed as well because I injured my back. Okay. (laughs) And this this is probably like the third time it's happened in like four years. So, you know, I should kind of not be injuring my back. But I did. I hurt myself when I was doing some work around the house. Actually making a bed, helping make a bed that Shamika designed and stuff for the children, like a loft bed. Um, so for the past Let's five get that days, right. You helped me, he helped me put up the bed. I made the bed. Okay, Sorry, I, I just helped. have to tell everyone that because I'm so proud of myself that, you know, I actually made a bed from scratch, from wood. From timber, from a tree. You trying to make it sound like you went, I you cut got the tree, tree, you scraped he, off the bark. I did, man. I did all of that. No, okay, okay. <laughs> I bought the, the timber tree, from but... a timber merchant. But I designed the bed. I cut the bed. I did everything. Okay, Issa didn't just put up the bed. He chiseled and stuff like that. But, you know, I did most of the work. <laughs> I just have to put it out there. But yeah, I feel I feel great. Anybody that I talk to, anybody that comes to the house, oh, have you seen my bed? <laughs> <laughs> I get so excited. I'm just like, yeah, I made this bed. And now, guys, you don't even know what sort of creative tap that has opened up for me. Now I want to make some shelves for the bathroom. I want to make a chair. I looked at how to make a head. Bo- I looked at how... Anyways, the list is endless, but... Trust me, every time I make something, I'm going to be letting you guys know because I've got so many plans, so many things I want to do. And it's not just like, fur- I know I'm going on, sorry, Issa. No, go but on. I know it's not just furniture. It's like artsy things as well. Like, where was this part of me? It was so dormant for years. And now I've had a daughter. She's brought it out of me. <laughs> <sighs> sorry, guys. Just relax, Shamika. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know I feel great. If you can't see that already or yes. hear that already. No, it's it's really good because um a few months ago Shamika said I've I've seen I've got this idea, I wanna make a bed and I want it to be a loft bed a few so it's months off ago. the ground. Well, how long ago you tell me? Last year. Remember, okay. remember, last I started, year. remember I started making it last year? Yeah, I don't but really... Then I, but then I stopped and then when I had the baby, it's like, okay, come on, let's pull it up now. Yeah. So then we had to like finish cutting it and whatever, whatever. But it was from last year. Okay, so, you know, from last... To me, anything, you know, further back than a few weeks ago, I just say a few months ago. That's just how I am. It could be two years ago. I'll be like, yeah, man, a few months ago. Um... And she had this idea and basically just a few weeks ago, the bed is basically done. It's sturdy, it's secure, it looks really nice. The children have all the floor space. The kids love it. It's really good. The only thing is that as soon as we had done it, I realised that I pulled a muscle or something in my back and... I could not walk properly. I was walking like an old man for a few days. He had doo doo in his pants. That too. (laughs) It it wasn't true, but it looked like it. And um, you know, I'm all right now. And I think I just I'm just thinking to myself, Issa, you need to look after yourself because you know you can't be injuring your back and then you can't work and 
all other sorts of problems. But Shamika looked after me really well. Properly, she wouldn't let me pick up stuff. She wouldn't, oh, she'd set the bath for me sometimes. I'd come home, wherever I went out, went for a little walk, or whatever I did. Set bath for me and everything. I came home just and could get in the bath. She's a great woman, so I'm very thankful for my missus, okay? And I just need to lose a bit of weight. And I just need to get it healthy. Don't all. <laughs> <laughs> you lost a whole lot of you lost eight pounds of weight when you had the baby, <laughs> isn't it? So you've already lost quite a lot of weight, and you brought a baby into the world. I just need to lose weight. I don't think you I, eight I, I, pounds is not, I, I eight like, pounds of a baby is not a lot of weight. It's the baby, <laughs> okay? Yeah, that's okay. nothing to do with my weight. Yeah, and the afterbirth. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's what they don't put in the films, isn't it? You don't see the afterbirth come out in the films when women are giving birth. Yes, sir. Let's not yeah, get into let, the Let's stop going of off into some next thing. Um, but yeah, guys, we're happy to be back and we're happy to bring this episode to you. So shall I make my way into what we're talking about? Yes. Um, I just want to give you guys a heads up, okay? Every now and then... We're going to have an episode where we bring you into things that we find interesting or things that we're doing and we're going to really dedicate time to it in the episode, which is what today's going to be like. Um, Basically, a few months ago, not last year, this is really is a few months ago. It probably is more like six months ago, if it's just said a few oh, months yeah, ago. Yeah, probably, yeah. Okay, probably, yeah. Um, I got in contact with an author, and his name is Nick Britton, okay? And I had big a... Big up to Nick Britton. Big, big up, Nick. Um, he's, a, he's a cool guy. Um, Facebook and stuff and joining groups and I, I I got to meet this guy and speak to him briefly and he mentioned that he'd written a book and I went and read the book and I really enjoyed it he's got a few books he's got a couple not just oh one yeah book, it's true he? yeah thanks for saying that babes he's actually written two best-selling books and I've I read both of them I read one of them yeah and um it was like Shamika read this book I want to interview this guy read it read it come on read it come on Sharika read it please just read it and then I read the book and I was like oh yeah I'm, I'm reading it yeah yeah <laughs> good you kind of can't put it down isn't yeah. it um so yeah it's called lessons from the little ones and it's, it's basically about how you as an adult can learn so much from children mm-hmm. and it's really well written now uh, I've spoken I've been speaking to this guy for quite a while, actually, and he is a very talented guy. He's done a lot in his life. He's not, he's not just an author. He's into real estate, and he, he goes and he, he gives talks, and he's, like, he's, he's a very motivational guy. Um, and we just want to introduce you guys to him and to his book, because... We think it's really important because we homeschool and we're parents. Yeah, but know? before we do that, yeah, Issa, can you tell me something that you've learnt from children, from your children? Yeah, I don't think you've worked with children before, have you? I haven't worked with children. So tell me something that you've learnt from your children or your niece. Um, you know, one of the main things as a dad that I've learned from my children is that they... Okay, what the, the way I used to look at my children when I first became a dad, so maybe let's say six years ago, I started to realize. Is that when you first became a dad? No, when <laughs> when our eldest was about two, three, and I had two, and the second boy was just over a year probably, and I used to look at my children. I used to think, okay, well, the main thing about you is that you're my son. That's your main characteristic kind of I never used to actively think it but that's how I just used to I realised that's how I used to think yeah Mm. and then what I realised 
you know, from like talking to your mum mm. quite a bit, actually, I realised that, no, they've got their own character and they're different. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They've got their own path in life and they've got their own things that they want to do. And my job as a dad is to help them get there, you know. So children are, my children are going to grow up and be adults. And, you know, one thing that I learned is, Issa, just guide them. Don't try and move them and put them where you think they should be. Guide them into what they want to do. And it took me a while to get into it. Shamika helped. Is, is a very good mum, so that helps a lot. But that's probably the main thing that I could say I learned from my children. Okay. What well, about you? Me, um, what I learned from having children, having multiple children, is that what? every child is different. Every child is different. There's like, they've come from, our children have the same mother and the same father. And each of our children, let's talk about the first three, because the, the youngest is she's only two months so you know mm. we haven't got a lot to go by so far but the the first three children are completely different they have different wants and needs they have different way they have a different way of doing things you learn different things from different children and another thing is that you cannot force your ideals and the way you think things should be onto your children because that can sometimes be a soul breaker. You can break your children's spirits by forcing what you want onto them. Mm. You know, that especially with the, especially when they're really young. You know, to, fair fair is not something that children are born with. It's something that is learned, yeah. and oftentimes adults put their fear onto children, and it's not a good thing. It's not a positive thing. You know, it just teaches them to not be as courageous as they were made to be, as adventurous as they were made to be. So, yeah, that's one thing I've learned from having children. Yeah, Yeah. well Well said, babe. Um, It's funny that you should say that because one thing I'll never forget is we had our first, Mm. okay? And then when we were, when you were pregnant with number two, I used to think that, especially if it's another boy, he's going to look similar to his brother. Mm. I don't know why I thought that, because just because you're brothers, you're not going to look alike. But I just thought, yes, me and Shamika made another child. That child's going to look like, Mm. but completely different. Mm. Um, so, you know, that just came into my head when you were talking. Yeah. Um, And another thing I was listening to the egos and opinions podcast mm -hmm. and, um, uh, Weave and Ivy had this stance that, um, you know, when you basically what they said is when you have children, your life is ended. Okay. We don't have to, your life has not ended but still what they're basically saying is that you have to put your child's needs first Mm -hmm. and I completely agree with you with that like everybody should agree agree with that and also another thing that most people don't um think most people who some people who have children do not okay let me say in let me say from my point of view I had my first child at 24 I think I was 23 when we conceived the first child. I should have been more selfish. I should have waited. And that's one thing that um, Ivy said. She's not having, she hasn't had children yet because she's, she's not, she wants to be selfish. She wants to do things for herself. But, and I think that's so good that she, some people don't realise that before they have children. Yeah. Like me, if I had thought about that, then maybe I wouldn't have had children when I did. I had, I would have waited because I hadn't done all the things that I wanted to do. I hadn't experienced the life that I wanted to, to, to lead before I had my children. I, had my, I kind of did it back way, backwards. Yeah. Yeah. But when she said that, I was like, yeah, why don't more people, why don't more people think like in that way? So yeah, you have to be careful before you have children, you have to be, be, cause it's, I don't even know how to say it because it's easy to say, yeah, 
um, you don't know what you're getting into. You don't know what you're getting yourself into when you're having children. You can never be prepared because it's something that you have never done. Mm. Even if you can get yourself as much prepared as you can, but still, when you that child is here, it's nothing like what you think it was going to be like. Yeah, no, that's you know? right. Even, and then, like, even taking it further, when you have the second child, then the third for us and the fourth, it's all different. You have to relearn stuff mm. and every child is also different and yep. society changes and the dynamics of the house change. And, you know, it's, you're constantly learning. Yeah. You yeah. know, so if you can be like Ivy and be like, well, I'm not going to have children, children yet now. because there's stuff that I need to do. That's a great yeah, mindset people, to have. And some people say, oh, well, that's just selfish. You just want to live. It. It's not selfish. It's selfish to have a child and not be ready to have that child. Yeah, that's the that's, least that's selfish you self- can be. Yeah, I think that's what Ivy That's said. not selfish. That's smart. Yeah. It's smart for you to actually know, no, I'm not ready. I'm not going to do it. You know, and it's selfish for you to do it and be like, oh, yeah, well, uh, I can't afford this and I can't afford that. You know? Yeah. So, Bring yeah. the child into the, the right environment. Yeah, or if keep possible. keep trying your best. Yeah. No one's perfect, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, you know, I listen to the Eagles and Opinions podcast. I like them. Uh, one of the hosts, Weave, I get along with him very well, always chatting to him. So I big them guys up. Um, but yeah. Uh, basically, Lessons from the Little Ones, we believe, is a great book. Nick is a great guy. And we want you guys to check this interview out. Wait, just tell us a bit about, like, where's he from? Where's he? Oh, um, I'm trying to get into the interview, in it Because that's my first one. Uh, but basically, the, the story that I, what I like about Nick Britton's story is that it's like when he left high school, it's like he had a lot of doubters. People were doubting what he could do in life. Mm-hmm. And then from there, it's like he's done so much. He was he um, joined the army. Um, he, he used to play um, American football as well. So he's a really fit guy. After that, he joined the army. Then he said, OK, well, you know, I want to be a teacher. And so... He got all of his, he got Studies. degrees and masters and stuff. He became a teacher. I learned a lot there. Mm-hmm. And then he got, he's also got into like real estate, buying houses and. But where's he from? Uh, he? I, I, I believe Nick is, is from he? Florida. I think okay. he's from Florida. Okay. I hope I'm right. I hope I'm not messing it up. Mm. So kind of on the spot. But he's there. from America. He's from oh America. yeah, so yeah, he is American. <laughs> yeah, he's a proud American. <laughs> I got yeah. it out eventually. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, where is he? What town was it? You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and he he's done a lot in life. So basically, the interview that you're about to hear, you're gonna learn about him. Him. He himself how he feels about certain things his morals things that he thinks really important why he became an author how he became an author and a bit about his background a bit about his background so you know we hope you guys enjoy it because i did it was my first time interviewing someone and what do you think i think you did i think you did did great yeah i think you did great first time doing an interview I, i enjoyed it so yeah so let's let them enjoy it now. Yes, let you enjoy it. So here's my interview with Nick Britton, best-selling author and a great guy. Hey Nick, welcome to Young Free and Coupled. First of all, before we get into anything, I know that you were directly affected by Hurricane Irma. How are you and the family holding up? Things are finally progressing a little bit uh you know her irma was over a month ago um over i think two months ago now potentially so we're finally just starting to 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 get everything together you still see some um some residual effects of that such as you know uh, down trees and piles of uh, rubbish and stuff but Overall, the city has come together. It's kind of sad that uh, sometimes when things fall apart is when, uh, you know, societies come together. But, uh, you know, after, after the hurricane, people helped other people, and that's always a good thing. 
Yeah, I know it's a negative thing that's happened, right? But, you know, over time, positive things start to happen, right? Yes, of course. They, well, I like to say it's always the, uh, the setback before the major comeback, right? You know, as a society, we all need a big comeback. We all need to, uh, to learn how to love each other and, and be tolerant of each other. So sometimes a little setback is uh, it's really what the doctor prescribed. Yeah, and obviously, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with everyone going through this tragedy. And, um, you know, we just hope, you know, people can kind of get together, people can work together and get through this. And, you know, here's to hoping that, you know, things change after this and we see a real difference the next time something like this should happen. But obviously, hopefully it doesn't. Yeah, Nick, so it's great to be able to speak to you finally. Um, you know, I want to kind of get into the meat of the conversation now. So what would you say your purpose is, you know, your core values? Uh, I ask because I've read a lot about you and you've done so much in your life since you left college. Yes, of course. And, and really the biggest thing with that is, you know, my purpose in this world is to help people. Right. I just want to be of maximum service to other people and to make this place a truly a, a better world to live in. Um, and as I grow, as I get more life experiences, uh, the ways I can help people dramatically changes all the time. You know, back in high school, I thought helping people, um, you know, I thought going into the military was a great way to help people. I thought, you know, just trying to be a good person doing um my part as a student was a good way to help people. Then I went to college and I, I realized at that time I thought that, uh, you know, being a teacher was an amazing way to help people. And the more I grow as a human being, the more I realize that, you know, every situation in life, we have an opportunity to, to help another person. And I wrote the book because I value uh, books, I value education, I value being a lifetime learner and learning throughout your whole life. And, and books, you know, some, some of my favorite books are 50 to 100 years old, right? Some wow. of the classics. Like, that's, that's what I need to do. I need to write a book to reach the masses. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what made you want to write about children and how you can learn from them? I ask because I've read that you had very interesting experiences in school, especially education-wise, and I think the listeners would love to hear about that. Yes, and uh, very uniquely, a little bit about my background. I don't even know if you know this, but when I was growing up, I was diagnosed with, uh, you know, a lot of special ed things, right? And you don't really have that over in Europe, but um, I was told I was slow. I was told that I was... I couldn't read, I couldn't write, I couldn't talk right, I was behind on all the tests, and, and I was just uh, somebody different. I realized that really every child is unique, every child is different, but um, you know, the idea that I wrote a book to people who knew me when I was younger, it's such, a, um, such an amazing accomplishment, because truthfully, the people around me kind of set me up for potential failure. Right, my teachers, um, I can't say all of my teachers, but some of my teachers told me that I would never be able to, you know, read as efficient as other people can. And fortunately, you know, I, um, I've been put in an opportunity to somewhat prove them wrong, to somewhat, um, you know, write a book. Why I wanted to write this is because I want to help people. A lot of, a lot of times people say, hey, Nick, I don't have a kid or I'm not a teacher. Can I still read your book and get something from it. And, you know, I think the best example of somebody who wants to read my book would be, you know, kind of like your listener, people who want to achieve a better life, people who want um, to become a little better in one aspect of, of their life. And that's who the book is for. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, the book is very positive and it's been sectioned really well even to the point that I believe that you could literally wake up and depending on what you have to accomplish that day, spend say 10 to 15 minutes reading a relatable chapter and getting that boost that you really need. Was that an objective that you chose when you were writing it? Yes, that's that's really what it's about. And I tell people all the time, it's, 
you know, if you woke up today, if you're given the opportunity to listen to this podcast, understand that you're truly blessed just to be alive and um, do something to better yourself. Um, you know, I would recommend you read my book, but if you don't read my book, read a book. You know, pick up some type of book out there and, and read and, and to expand your mind and to just try to become a, a better human being. What time of your life was it that you were labeled as having learning difficulties again? It started probably around the age of eight or nine. And oh. it went, oh, you know, I graduated 18 to 20. It went for a very long time. Yeah, um, it's funny that you should say that because me and my wife found that how our children learned at school heavily depended on the teacher. Because at one point we had a teacher that was very involved and attentive. But then we also had one that was kind of the opposite. And I'm mentioning this because one of our children was starting to be put in lower and lower ability groups, you know, in school. Because uh, they kind of said that his writing wasn't fast enough. And basically we realised that that meant that he'll be pushed less. So anyway, that was interesting to read in your book and see the correlation in some of the experiences that you had and how it kind of related to our son it's also interesting because now that he's homeschooled we believe that he's doing a lot better and it's funny that you were told when you were at school that you would not do so well and now you have two best-selling books so it shows just how important the mind is doesn't it yes and that's huge and i i think with that story we, we really emphasize how important, truthfully, parents are, role models are, understanding that, you know, I call myself an educator. You're an educator, right? You're a teacher. You're a role model. You're a father. You're a lot of things. And we all wear different hats. But at the end of the day, it's important to us to, uh, to truly know that, you know, we are role models. We have eyes looking up to us. And... Um, that's one of the biggest responsibilities in the world to think about. It's like, damn, I got, I got kids that look up to me. Yeah. What am I going to do with that? You know, like that's a big pill to swallow right there. But with that said, you know, I, I had teachers that believed in me as well, right? That's why I became a teacher. I wanted to have a positive impact on children's lives. I can tell you certain teachers that really believed in me. Um, I, I still know their names. 20 years later, I can still tell you their names. But uh, just valuing, you know, we, we all have some type of impact on this world. And, and really, that's all we, that's all we have um, at the end of the day. It's like, you know, what do we bring to this world? Um, it's a very deep conversation, but it's, it's important to, uh, to put in the front of your mind and to not forget about Oh, okay. So as you just said, teachers have had a massive impact on your life, right? Now, you actually went on to be a teacher yourself. So what qualifications is it do you have? Is it a bachelor's or a master's? Um, I have both. So I have, wow, uh, have both. <laughs> a two four-year degrees and I have a, a master's afterwards. I, I know, you know, you guys over in, in, in Europe call it different things, but yeah. I have... Um, but yes, I, I do. I have a, a master's, which is, you know, uh, undergrad plus plus like two, three years. Wow. So it's, yeah, I have some courses towards my PhD and whatnot. But really, at the end of the day, is why I um why I wrote that book is because I you know you can take all of my formal education, my high school degrees, my college degrees, my master's program, everything, and I um. I truly think I learned more by observing children, and that's why I wrote the book. All right, so how did you find being a teacher? You know, all the experiences that you write about were from your teaching career, but what lessons do you still have now that you would say are directly from your time teaching? Yes, and I think, you know, as, as you previously mentioned, I talked about in my book, The uh, Dreaming, right? Children are the... Uh, that they have the greatest imagination in the world. We lose that. It's very sad to say. But as we get older, we stop dreaming. Uh, and I truly think we stop living as soon as we stop dreaming, right? So for in order to fully live and fully uh, feel part of this world, it's essential 
to continue to dream, to continue to inspire for more, uh, to want to have a bigger impact on this, on this, on this planet. Yeah. And that all starts with, with your mind, with your imagination and understanding that, you know, you can, it's 2017 right now. We can, you can really do anything that you want to do. Wow. Uh, extremely well said. All right, guys. Well, Nick's newest book is comprised of nine lessons, each complete in their own right. But I have to say that they do come together to make some really great overall points. And if it's OK, I'd like to discuss a few. If that's all right, Nick. Yes, of course. All right. I'm really glad you said that because there's a few lessons that really stick out that I just want to quickly discuss. You know, the first one being, it's not that serious. Now, by the way, guys, that's actually the name of one of the lessons. It's actually called, it's not that serious, all right? Um, the reason being that I'm quite a laid back guy, you know, Shamika will attend to that. And I think that nowadays in society, there's a culture of putting pressure on children. And we really saw that when the kids were in public school. Now, in your book, one sentence that really spoke to me in the light of all this is when you say, it's okay to have a break, you know, have some downtime. So one question that I personally have that I have to ask you is, would you say that it's okay to have complete breaks? You know, as in taking time, not thinking about your goals, just living for the moment, or would you say that your goals and plans should always be in the back of your mind, no matter what? Mm, that's a, you know, I think that's an, individ an individual question, but I can speak for me. And, and to be honest with you, I am obsessed with my goals, my dreams, what I want out of this world, what I want to, you know, to give to my children, what I want my children to, uh, to grow up with my legacy. I am so obsessed with that, um, that I don't, I don't know how to do that. It might sound sad. It might sound bad. I do not know how to, uh, fully 100% unplug. And now with that, you know, the wife and I, we call it date night. We had a quote date night last night. We had a good dinner and stuff, but you know, I understand that I wasn't, I, will, I wouldn't have been able to take her to a nice restaurant if, you know, I wasn't working so much, right? If I wasn't putting in the hours, if I wasn't doing my job, um, I wouldn't have been able to do that thing. Um, so I think it's all connected. It's all relative and it's all connected. And you need to understand that, um, you know, when, when it said it's not that serious, it's not. Because I see a lot of people get so stressed about their life and where they're going and just they don't stop to truly enjoy it um i don't think you know any person can do a hundred percent of one thing right i don't think it's possible to be a hundred percent unplugged or even a hundred percent plugged in right as human beings it's like I, I use this analogy it's like you know imagine a stove top where there's four burners on the stove and you only have so much energy that can go into all four burners, um, something's got to give and something's got to take. And I think it's impossible to just have uh, all your attention on one thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually really like that analogy. It's not one that I've heard before, but it's really fitting. It makes complete sense. So, you know, guys, you can hear how straight to the point Nick is. Uh, how he portrays himself and his message and you know how positive it is and that's what you can kind of expect when you pick the book up now the last lesson I want to discuss with you Nick is this and it's the power of your mind now with this I could easily relate to over 90% of what you've written about just by being a dad and spending a lot of time with my children you know hearing them psych themselves up when they're learning and you know them telling themselves that they can learn these new things that are really hard for them it's obviously down to my wife as well because she really instills that power in them when she's teaching now you have broken out a lot of barriers 
So can you talk a little bit about how you use the power of your mind to get to these new heights in life? You know, because you've got so many business ventures and so much going on. And I think you have to have a really strong mind to do that. Yes, of course. And it's funny because that my biggest takeaway from from the book as well is is understanding that this whole world is controlled honestly by our mind. Right. And and I need to understand that if for whatever reason I wake up and I'm not having a good day happens to us all. Right. Maybe my energy levels are a little low. Maybe I just can't get motivated. I can't get excited to get through it. We've all been there. I, I, I have no one to blame but myself. Right. And fully once we understand that that we're fully responsible for every aspect of our life, we're going to know a new freedom and a, and a new happiness but we need to understand that, A, we're in control over our mind. Therefore, we are in control over our life. An example of that, and, and I write a book. The book is, you know, one of my books is Children Know Success. So I studied successful people and a lot of the very high successful people. People in categories that, you know, for instance, Jay-Z. I don't like rap music, but I love Jay-Z because, you know, he's – He's the best example of the power of the mind. He grew up in a very bad neighborhood in New York City. He imagined himself making millions of dollars. And now the guy is worth, you know, half a billion dollars, right? So I, I studied all these highly successful people, and they had one thing in common, and that was their imagination. They were in control over their mind. They imagined um, success before it came. And it comes down to, you know, there's, you can either have positive thoughts or negative thoughts. I'm not going to say there's anything potentially bad with negative thoughts, but what good can come from something, from thinking something negative, right? What good will come from a negative thought? I can't think of anything, you know, so I try to focus on the positive. Yeah, man, positivity is really important. That is something that I try to take with me just in general throughout life. So I think you're absolutely right about that. Okay, so you've got a lot on your plate, Nick. So what's next, man? The biggest thing, you know, is uh, I spend a lot of time on my business, on my writing. And, and right now I feel like with my business, the, the wheels have kind of been turning. But with my personal life, I've made a lot of big moves, which is very exciting. Uh, the wife and I just bought a house, um, which, is, which is huge, actually buying a house. And now, you know, understanding the way my wife and women work, I need to create this house and we need to make a loving home to raise our kids in and uh that's taken up a lot of my time but i'm so excited for that so honestly as soon as i get off this phone i'm gonna put on some crappy clothes i'm gonna get uh paint and a brush and just start painting like a madman um so when my wife comes home from work she's she's happy with the progress i made but really that's what i'm doing right now i'm focusing on my on my family which uh which i think everyone needs to focus on all right, well, I follow you on all the different social media platforms and I'm seeing a lot of the positive and the motivational messages that you put up there. Uh, you know, we're also in a Facebook group called Answers for Real Men, which is run by uh, Arnie Fonseca Jr. You know, he founded it as well. Really great guy. He actually had me as a guest uh, a few months ago now. So, I, you know, I've got a lot of love for that guy. Um, you guys, listeners, check that out if you can. Um, but as for you, Nick, can you tell the listeners the best ways for them to get through to you? So, you know, social media, email, whatever it is, just let them know the best ways for them to contact you after hearing this. Of course. And again, my name is, I'm sure it'll be in the show notes, but my name is Nick Britton. That's B-R-I-T-T-O-N. And most of my social media is um, at N. J Britain. And with that being said, what I want to do, I want to connect with people. I want to connect with like-minded people. So if you see me on Facebook, if you see me on Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is, you know, shoot me a message. That's all I want. I want to be surrounded by like-minded people. You know, and you brought up Arnie and his answers for real men. That's what, that's what I want to do. I want to just find people um, across this world who are on the same path as me. And my path is to truly just help as many people as possible and to bring positivity uh, into the world around me. Yeah, all right, Nick, man. Thanks again for coming on to Young, Free and Coupled. 
It's really appreciated, man. Thanks for giving our listeners some of your time. That's been great. Uh, that's been Nick Britton, best-selling author of Lessons from the Little Ones. So, guys, that was the interview. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you... Got something out of it. Yeah, got something out of it. Kind of see the way that I think, you know, because I asked him questions that I thought about for quite a while. Mm. Um, you know. And you know what, Nick? I really appreciate the way that you, at the end of the interview, you... Um, Wanted to, you know, get changed out of your clothes and, you know, go and do so. I, you, like, I like a man that still, even though you work hard, you, you know, you strive to do the best you can. You, you follow your dreams. You still want to come home and make sure you impress your wife. You just want to get that paint, get that paintbrush out and do some paint so your wife could come home and be happy. That's what we like. We just <laughs> like the little things. We like, you know, we like to see some progress. If I say, Issa, put up a shelf and you haven't done it, then, you know. What? But, Listen. Like, if it, no, if you, if he, I'm not saying anything bad, yeah? Okay, if you haven't right. done it, you haven't done it for a few days and on the fourth day or something, I come back and see, I'm like, I'll be like, Oh wow! Yeah, this. Oh, thanks, Issa. <laughs> so yeah, I really, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Don't do too much painting, Nick. D- Save your hands to write great books. You can do, do a both. bit of painting. You can do both. Okay, you can do both. Yes. Um. Yeah, Nick. Um. He's a really busy guy. As you heard in that interview, he does a lot of things. Um, so but yeah, I'm he, very thankful for that. that he's yeah, and he's left his details. He gave the details. So yeah, he, yeah. If you want to contact him, you guys can contact him. You know, I'm sure he'll be he'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Yeah, please do that. You know, he he he's quite he uses social media quite a lot. Dads out there, and just men in general. general. If if you're on Facebook. That group that we talked about, Answers for Real Men, check it out. Go see if you like it, if you like the look of it, join the Facebook group. I'm part of it, Nick's part of it. Arnie Fonseca Jr., as you heard, he's part of it too. And, you know, there's a lot of help there. It's a, it's a, it's a safe place for guys to go and talk about stuff. Yeah, I haven't been there before. <laughs> In the Answers for Real Men. Um, yes okay then so we're going to wrap this up yeah let's wrap it up guys thank you for sticking around and for you guys that have already subscribed thank you it really helps us a lot send me a message twitter facebook whatsapp email all the information will be in the notes okay Um, and if you're a new listener Whatever app you listen on, okay, subscribe to us. Apple Podcasts, any Android app out there, subscribe subscribe to us so that when new episodes come out, you know a about it. Yeah. yeah, you get a notification. And, you, you know, this podcast that we're doing is, is really important to us. We want to do some really cool stuff and bring you guys in and talk to you guys and everything. Yeah. That's right. I said it better. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you, babes. All right then, guys. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.